Hey everyone, it's Joseph Shepard. And I'm Marta Mama. Welcome to Exposed España, a podcast where a podcast, a podcast where we break down everything Drag Race España season three. I like that word. What's that word again? Posca. That's how I we say it with our friends in Spanish, so that's why it slipped. Posca. No, no, I like that. That's something that I never knew. I love that. Yeah. We're gonna keep that in because that's another lesson. <laughs> So, Marta, before before we even get into this episode, I want to tell you that one of my friends here, um, I do improv, and her name's Marcel, and she's been learning Spanish, and she's a big mm -hmm. fan of Drag Race, and she's like, you know, I just really want a podcast where I can, like, learn the España things, and I was like, Marcel, I have it for you. <laughs> so she messaged me yesterday and was like, oh, my goodness. She sent me a picture of our podcast, Aww. and then she said... <laughs> Your Spanish pronunciation, LOL. I love this. I'm learning so much. So good for me bettering my Spanish. The Macarena killed me. And on top of that, the pink Chidora pun blew my mind. And I'll never forget DJ in Spanish now. Wow. Look what we're doing. That's so cute. We're yeah. educating the children, you know? And some children <laughs> sent us another email, which I'm going to read. And it says, hi, Joseph and Marta. My name is Lourdes and I'm from Texas. I'm loving your podcast that it helps me understand Spain so much more than I ever would have thought. Thank you, Marta. So question, oh. I'm very confused with the themes of this week's ball. I interpreted it as color, flavor, and region, but some of the choices for color and flavor I found odd. Could you let me know if I'm missing something? Thanks, Lourdes. <sighs> Of course I can, Lourdes. No problem. I've got you. So the memo the girls got are flavors of Spain and colors of Spain. But it also said that you, if you are not Spanish or you you want to show your heritage, that you should bring that to the runway. Mm -hmm. So that's why not all the flavors and all the colors represented Spain necessarily. A lot of them, a lot of these runways, unless you get the reference you may not understand so after listening to the podcast i think every everything will make sense yeah you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean mm -hmm. so why don't we take a little break and when we get back we're gonna get into all of these references the whole ball 33 looks uh so stay tuned okay are back. It's Exposed España. I'm here with Marta Mama and it's time for the ball. We have our three categories like was said earlier, colors, flavors, and region. And their region look was chosen by Pink Chidora since she won last week's challenge. So yes. these looks, they were like, how many looks were there? Nine or 10 looks? 11. There were 11 11 queens. looks. Yes. Yeah. And so these were all apparent to certain regions of Spain. Is that what it is? Yes. They're regional costumes that you would use in that city's specific festivities or for traditional traditional things that we do in Spain. Uh, we're used to only knowing of the flamenco dress, but people have to understand that Spain has a very big variety in traditions and customs and in folklore and everything like language, food, the people, absolutely everything can change in a matter of a hundred miles in Spain. So it's cute that they're showing a little bit more than just the flamenco dress, the horses and the, you know, the typical things. I loved it. How many of those dresses or those outfits did you know of? Did you know them all? Oh, there were a lot I didn't know of. Like <gasps> I'm not the most Spanish, Spanish person, you know? Um, I didn't know the ones from La Rioja, like the north of Spain is very mysterious for me sometimes, mm -hmm. even though my family is from the north of Spain. But yeah, they're not that very well known, but I was happy to learn about that. Like even the people from Spain, we are learning about all those things, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if you, if people got this, but Pinchadora was the one that chose all of the looks, like which regional costume will go to who, but she only chose them like in the order they were standing. She didn't do it on purpose. She did it just randomly in the order that the outfits were and the people were standing. Interesting. Like uh, the queens were told that 70% of the chat of the, of the whole week was going to be the sewing 
challenge. Mm -hmm. And 15%, 15% were going to be the other two categories. So this is going to be a 70% thing. And yeah, I think they all did a very good job. I was very happy with this episode. Did you enjoy like the episode in general? Or were, oh, yeah. I want to it know seems... if you guys were confused, you know, because it was very Spanish. Yeah, no, I wasn't confused at all. Of course, you know, I didn't get hardly any of the references, but that's fine. I understood where a lot of them were coming from. And then afterwards, I went and did my homework regarding all the flavor looks because I was like, what do all these, you know, outfits and words mean? So then I was understanding you know, like there was, you know, like a fried egg and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, now I'm picking it up a little bit more. So it was the first time that I had after an episode of España, as opposed to waiting for you, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go and try to look up some of this. So at least I have oh some my. knowledge. So <gasps> proud of you, Joseph. Oh, my God. I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get into our judges and they all come out and I'm confused. Who was this guest judge that was in this big fur coat just ready? Like, who is this man? Oh, my God. He's always wearing the same fur coat. This is a designer <laughs> in Spain. He designs like model for him is usually Inti from season one, for example. Okay. And he is usually a judge in our Spanish version of Project Runway. OK, makes sense. Yeah. And Ornella was like impersonating someone with a weird voice throughout the whole episode. That's another judge from the same you know, it's from the oh. same show. So since it's a sewing challenge, they're all doing that. Can I say something? Mm. Um, Anna Locking is my winner for this season of Drag Race España. I am um, like, this look is amazing. This hair, the nails. Uh, she is 52 years old. Stop. She is not. She is. She is you can look it up. She is 52 years old she is from 1971 i know i know she is my winner this season <laughs> wow give her the crown i don't know if it's just genetics or what but damn 52 you know, i have the same problem you know i'm actually 76 <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 okay you guys let's take a break and when we get back we're gonna get into this runway and all the references we are back it's runway time it is the great ball of regions um i am so excited to chat about all these looks now in, on the runway, they all came down in categories. So the first category was colors, and we kind of got into flavors, and then we got into the regions look that they made. But what we're going to do for this podcast is we're going to go over each individual contestant, and then we're going to go into all three of their looks. So we'll start with the colors, and then flavors, and then regions. So it will make it a little bit easier to follow along who's wearing what as a package. So first up, we have Paquita. What do you think of her? I always want to know what you think about Paquita, like specifically you, you know, your opinion is important for me. She is just something that I resonate with so well. Like I resonate with her so well. I love her. I think she's beautiful and she knows what she's doing. You know, I, does. I love when somebody knows what they are doing and they're good in so many things. Her colors look, let's go into it. Okay. Her colors look was beautiful, but people probably didn't understand the reference. This is a rociera dress. El Rocio is a big pilgrimage that a lot of people do in Spain, actually in my area of Spain. On a tiny, small little village of like a thousand people, there's a specific weekend where there's over a million people and people walk there. They go by horses in wagons, singing Sevillanas. And this would be a traditional Rocío look, like with a loose skirt, a loose dress that you can walk in. The cane that she has, the walking cane, mm -hmm. was actually an original walking cane from that pilgrimage thing. That has been to El Rocío many times. Wow. The flowers and the plants are from El Rocío. 
and she is washing her feet with beer because a very famous celebrity that we have in Spain, we had, she sadly passed away, Carmina Ordóñez. Um, there was these images of her in the 90s washing her feet with beer in El Rocío because you end up very filthy after walking on the dirt for days and days. So that would become like this iconic moment. So she was referencing that. But there's a, another reference. This look is not supposed to be El Rocío. That's like a secondary look. She's supposed to be the traditional sh chairs that we use for many of our parties and festivities. The skirt is painted with the same details, the same exact color. And if you see her peineta in her head, that's made from the same materials that the, like their handmade chairs are made from. They actually lost the package. She was going to have a peineta, a three feet tall peineta, huh? the thing on her head, uh -huh. uh, made with that material and a corset. So we would have understood that better. But the, you know, the messaging company lost the package. We oh, still no. don't know where it is since filming. So she destroyed a chair the night before filming. <laughs> and she made that peineta, which works wonderfully. Like, I think it yeah. was a successful look no matter what. So it's layers upon layers of references and, you know, traditional things. I hate that she lost that or that the postal system lost that. But... I love what she did. Like she was creative and thinking, you know what? I'm going to smash this chair for now. Yeah. And Paquita would always say like, the people that are watching you do not know what idea you had before the show or before the mm -hmm. runway. So just go with it. You're the only one that's going to be sad of something that you lost. Okay. So I think I could, I am completely biased with Paquita as you know, she's my track aunt. I watched the whole episode with her by my side and the whole team Paquita and we were like holding hands and, uh, you know, it was a beautiful moment for the whole family. And this meant a lot because it had a lot of work from all of her sisters and they were all around and it was beautiful. Yeah. So we have Paquita's flavor look and is it just a fried egg? Is it a, is that what it is? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the only thing she eats. Oh, really? <laughs> She is a very, very picky eater, and she only eats fried eggs. So she did this hat with the hair. In Spain, the fried eggs are very specific. The whites are always cooked, but the yolk has to be completely, absolutely runny. Mm. And we eat them with a loaf of bread. We just soak the bread into the yolk. It's mandatory here. So she brings a loaf of bread. Um <laughs> painted in gold like it's a scaparelli uh, reference and she even had like huge crystals like the salt on top of the egg the the, the earrings were like salt rocks uh the attention to the details is amazing did you like this one I did like, like this one I did and I thought that the flow of it too like that's not the dress that I would expect with that egg hat on you know, like that's not what I would expect, but it looks very elegant. And it looks well, like here we eat our eggs. We fry, we like basically deep fry them in a frying pan with a lot of olive oil. Ooh. They're amazing, Joseph. Don't judge us. So um, they get very crispy on the border and on the little corners. They get crispy corners. And that we call the same way that we call that type of ruffle on the dress. So she is puntillas, you know, the little ruffles. That's how we call the ruffles on the fried egg. That's so cool. She is like so many layers of smartness and beauty. And I, I like, I freaking love it. I also love eggs. And also I feel sorry for anybody that is around Paquita a lot if she ever has gas, because I'm pretty sure that's awful. <laughs> And egg is also the word that we use in Spanish. It's like a little bit of a curse word. That's how we would talk about our, uh, like you guys is nuts. So what would you say? Yeah, like testes. Those uh -huh. are called eggs in Spanish. You guys call them nuts. We call them eggs. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They're bigger here, you know. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, so funny. Um, and then we have Paquita's region look. Now, what region was she given? She was given Valencia. She is not from Valencia. Her 
one of her best friends in the world is another drag queen from Valencia. So she's been there. She knows the regional costumes. She has done a lot of parties about Valencian folklore as well. So uh, she was saying that it was super cute because when she got Valencia, she immediately thought of her friend, La Caudilla. And it was like she had company that week, you know? Uh, in those festivities in Las Fallas, I don't know if I've ever explained that, they build giant statues and they put them on the street. And there is one specific night where they lit them on fire and they burn them to the ground. That's why she has the legs are completely black because she okay. is one of those burnt statues from Las Fallas. If you think of that region and that region folklore, you would think like fire, burning things, you know? So she did the uh, an interpretation, a sexy drag interpretation of the regional costume on top with a little bit of an Andalucia vibe. And the legs are completely and absolutely burnt. Smart, 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 smart. She is a smart, smart. cookie. And she's gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. And she did a great job in the execution of that outfit. She did. She does know how to sew. She sewed ba almost everything that she's wearing this year. Next, let's get into Ornella Gongora. The first look was absolutely like the first two looks, I think, were probably some of my favorite looks from this runway the first look is colors and she comes out with like a weird quilted skirt with the texture this is if you have ever been to her home place to alicante you would immediately recognize this those are the tiles on the floor and the sidewalk of alicante and the lace that she has on top comes from the regional costume of Alicante. So she's doing something like very avant-garde, very fashion, but very traditional, like very recognizable for us, you know? And it's quilted, so it looks exactly like the tiles. And it's so smart that she merged two things together. like. The tiles as the quilted dress with the three different colors, beautiful. And then to have the lace on top and then that big hat on top, I think it comes together so beautifully. Yeah, her taste level is on point. This woman is a professional and she really knows what she's doing, I mean. Mm -hmm. This was so beautiful, so successful. People in Alicante are congratulating her for representing the city so well, you know? That's so good. And she she just looks phenomenal. It's that's that's a really, really well constructed dress. So props. Love her. Love it. Next up, this was another one of my favorite looks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it was so stupid. <laughs> So the next look is her flavors look, which I did look this up. Marta, let's go into it. It's a fidua. Is that what you said? Oh, fidewa. Oh, fidewa. 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 Exactly. Yes. Okay. It's, and what is that? It's similar to a paella, but instead of having rice, it has noodles, like tiny little noodles. That's why she has the fringe. The fringe is supposed to be the tiny golden noodles because Fidewa was a very golden color. And it's usually made of seafood. So she has like a little clam. And the, the most important part of this outfit is obviously the hair. The hair yes. is everything. Oh, just the hair to be like a little shrimp, like a little prawn. It's so cute. It is so cool. This is amazing. And looking at your reference, looking at your reference pictures, <laughs> those noodles look just like it. I thought that you were referring to like actual noodles, but you need to look no. at this. Like if you all are at home and you're thinking like noodles as what you think of, no, you need to go no. and type in this word that I just forgot what it was again. Say it again. <laughs> F-I-D-E-U-A. F-I-D-E-U-A. It's super cute. I loved it. We were all screaming when we saw this. And she knows 
this is a great look. Like in her face, you can see yeah, it. Yeah, you saw it. The fideuwa is always served with, with like little slices of lemon. So you can put lemon juice on top of it. So she has a lemon and, you know, it's all about the details. And I loved that the judges were eating it up as she walked out too. I was like, yeah. there's that childlike behavior of you guys liking something. Like there it is. Exactly. That's what we were missing. The judges being excited about something because we cannot, you know, be invested in something if the judges are like, well, meh. <laughs> meh. And then we have Ornella's region look. Now, what region is this from? This is from, well, the costume she got was from Zaragoza in Aragon. And what she basically has from Zaragoza are the two scarves she has on the back with the fringe and el cachirulo, which is the traditional headscarf that they use in Peralta for their festivities, which is black and red. We will see a lot of other references to this scarf. This look she didn't like very much. I thought I loved the texture on the tights mm -hmm. and but she is not the biggest seamstress and she didn't like the final look of the outfit but her face and her hair I was gagging still because she was even beauty with something that she wasn't convinced about you know yeah she she looked beautiful I do love that the stockings that she has on her legs however like you said you know it's it's not a great standout look um but she tried and you can tell she tried and at least she's not wearing gift bags on herself like Lala. Right? Yeah. I must say that part of the challenge was that the, the production will give you one item of clothing from that regional costume and you have to incorporate that somehow. Mm. That was part of the challenge. So Paquita had like a very big corset that was more of a problem than a solution and I think uh, Ornella had like some scarves from that place and she tried to do something with it something a little bit different so she created these strips that look a little bit like ties maybe mm -hmm. and yeah I think if it wasn't for this outfit she would have been in the top clearly but oh, the yes. sewing challenge was the 70 percent of the final the final grades that the judges were having you know but those first two looks ornella you you had me you had me i'm starting to see ornella now and i'm excited yes. about that i i'll tell you when she first came out with both of those those first two looks for the regions i mean for the um, flavors and the colors that was perfection and that's the type yeah. of drag i love i love like that corny campy drag of like using something like this dish and just making it into something so comical and fun. But elevated and yes. polished and a lot of detail, you know, even with the first look that was a little bit more fashion, mm -hmm. she's she's just having a look made of the sidewalk of her city, which is campy itself, yes. you know? So I, I love her mind. I love how she looks at fashion because it's not campy like anything goes. It's campy like I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do camp, you know. Uh, and next up, we have the girl who did it all and gave everybody their own regions. Pink, Shadora. The color look. What is this referring to? This is a uh, biznaga. Biznagas are like a bundle of jasmine flowers that they will sell on the streets in Malaga, in her home city. And they sell them, first of all, because they smell wonderfully, but uh, it's also good to keep the mosquitoes away. So really? it's very, yeah, it's very traditional from her city. So that's the headpiece. And the dress is just like a beautiful bridal white dress. Did you like this one? Uh, no. <laughs> I did. I liked it. I liked the did headpiece. You? Yeah, they said that it looked like an like the old school swimming hats, you know? <laughs> oh yes. Like the old like nineteen tens and twenties, like get into the exactly. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> I think that my issue is the the overall theme of my issue for all three of these looks for her came down to the makeup. I yes. think that the makeup came off a little strong and made her look a lot 
older, I guess you would say, than what I was anticipating. So the makeup in each of those looks, I think, kind of threw me off. I agree. She has a very specific face. Yes. So it's like the face is like 90% of her whole head. It's difficult <laughs> sometimes. It's so true. And she's not the type of queen that really puts on me or works every, like five nights a week. Yeah. You know, she's not used to doing drag, at least that's what I know, like every single day. She doesn't put on makeup every single day ever. Mm -hmm. So I think she's trying new things and she's trying to be more and more fabulous. But maybe she doesn't have the experience of painting mm -hmm. every single day that other queens have. It's true. It's true. But I mean, maybe if you drink what her next look is, you won't have any issues with her makeup because <laughs> it was <laughs> it was wine, red wine. We had vino. Oh my god. What do you think of this? I the look like a lot of people loved it, a lot of people hated it. It's it's either one of those. Me particularly, I think it was too splashy. Does mm. that make sense? It looked yes. like algae, maybe? Yes. The shoes actually is the part that I like the most because they were made of cork. Now that's smart. I love the 1920s thing with the hair and everything. But for me, it was a little bit too much, the plastic that she used, too splashy for it to, for me to understand that it was wine. Did you get wine immediately? Yeah, I didn't get wine. wine. I didn't get wine immediately until I went and looked it up on the internet. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's what it is. And then it made even more sense when she put up the picture on her Instagram of her like laying down, like on a, was it like stairs or something? So it looked like she was yeah. like splashed over, which yeah. that made sense to me. But if she's standing up, it is very hard to interpret that as like a splash of wine. Yeah, it is difficult. I don't know. Do you know how cheap wine is in Spain? How you cheap? do not understand. Like we're huge producers of wine in a, very decent bottle of wine can be like two bucks. What? Yeah, five bucks of good one. You know, you have to come. Like I've been saying this, but you have yes, to a lot of people in Spain eat would have a glass of wine in every single meal. Even the doctors would say that it's good for your heart. They don't say that anymore, but they used to say <laughs> that. <laughs> it's like the excuse. So it's it's very normal having wine in like every lunch. For a lot of I love I love that you're saying that it's two bucks because here in America we know to our two dollar wine as two buck chuck, which basically <laughs> means like disgusting wine. So very interesting. No, I mean decent wine. You can have it mm. cheaper even. You know. Yeah, you got to get over there and <laughs> go order do. all the wine in the world. <laughs> 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 now this last look made me not be able to look at the tv screen poor poor big talent i think she she selected this for herself though yeah she sure did in what region is this this is supposed to be salamanca i believe her father was from salamanca so this is the charra dress but mm. the original original costume looks a hundred times better in my opinion yeah she tried to go to a little more like 80s madonna, madonna. Right? With those boots. Yeah. The boots are cool. It just makes all of the volumes a little bit off, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things missing. The wig is terrible. Oh, the wig's awful. The wig is awful. And when she posted this look, she posted it without the skirt because I think that's a good idea. Like, the skirt wasn't helping. You're either mm -hmm. making, like, a big tutu, like, in the 80s fashion tutu things, or nothing at all. But this just piece of lace wasn't helping very yeah. much. I think in my head, I'm like, I wish that she would have taken the lace and at least done something and put it over that hair a little bit. And I don't know how, where, or why, but that hair needs to be covered and thrown in a fire. <laughs> Your tone, Laura, your you tone seems hair? very pointed right now, Joseph. <laughs> I don't know what it is. That hair is just, 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 it makes me mad. I understand. Yeah, she could have done something with that hair. Yes. I must say that they had to do the three looks in the same day, and they didn't have a lot of time to sew. 
So, yeah, but I would have done something with that. And And next up, we have, um, okay, let me see. I'm going to do this. Vanya Vanin. Your friend from the other day is going to be so proud of you. You're doing amazing. Vanya Vanilla. Her first look was the red and black look. She is from the place that um, Ornella got the regional costume from. She also had like the red and black things on her costume. So this is her interpretation of, of the home city. She is referencing the red and the black, even the skirt uh looks with the she has like square sequin on the skirt it does mm-hmm. look like the traditional headscarf um yes. the big flowers come from a tradition that once a year everyone in Zaragoza goes to offer flowers to the virgin it's a very tiny virgin with millions and millions of flowers underneath it's amazing so that's why she has so many big flowers and the crown on her head looks exactly like the crown that La Virgen del Pilar, that virgin, has. So if you know a little bit about the reference, this look makes a lot more sense. I love this for her. You know what I mean? Maybe I don't like this yeah. look for any other queen. But if you're going to give old school drag, I like this way of being referential, old school, the silhouette, the hair was good the big shoulder like i wasn't expecting to love vanya this much i know what you mean and i i really do love the outfit i love the hair i love the reference the reference that i get it now and it makes so much more sense and she her voice does uh-huh. is that are you getting that from the u.s because i know you guys read the subtitles but it's just the tone of her voice is like she's I don't know. She's like an actress and she is yes. saying everything with some yes. type of voice. When we saw the Meet the Queens, we were all freaking out, like saying, oh, she's overacting so much. She is creating this character. Everyone hated on her, but she is like that 24 <laughs> seven. And I'm living. <laughs> so true. Next up, this was a look I was very confused with. Very yeah, confused with. Because it came under flavors. So for me, everybody's look referring to flavors was very um, food driven. And this is not food driven, right? Yes, it is. That's it candy. Is. <laughs> yeah. It's candy. That's, <laughs> that's the traditional candy that they have in her city during these festivities. Yeah. It's a piece of hard candy. Very big. You will eat that for long time and they're very well known they're very traditional from there and she even incorporated the red and black um you know pattern that the cachirulo the said headscarf has so yeah she's bringing it bringing it but for me drag is not something that you're holding in front of you you know yes yes that is a i pop. agree with that that is not a look and i think that that's probably why it confused me as well because it just looked like she was wearing a short red dress you know yeah so what is this candy? Yeah, it's a hard candy that they have in Las Fiestas del Pilar in those festivities. And it's it's recognizable. If you've ever been, you would you have like a couple of... Your dentists love these, you know? Are they like fruity <laughs> candies? Yeah. Okay. Like strawberry candy. Yeah. Okay. And then next up, we have our region look. She is, she had a couple pieces of fabric from the regional costume of Catalunya, which was called La Pubilla. And she decided to take it to a, you know, a lady of the night route, Mm -hmm. I think. She had a mini, mini, mini skirt or a large belt, depending on what you consider it. (laughs) (laughs) Like some type of like jacket structure. This wasn't the best, but if you think about it, if you know how to sew, this is actually like two rings of of fabric, one that she has around her shoulders and one that she has around her waist. I think this comes from someone that is very smart and knows how to sew, like minimal effort for the maximum look, you know? Yes. But if you're going to do this, do it like 10 times bigger. Yeah. But tool in the middle and make a huge structure or 
do something with the skirt so it skirts a little bit more. It's not skirting. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not skirting. <laughs> it for sure isn't skirting. It's very short. I would say it's more of a sh. -sh, 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 -sh. <laughs> Next up, we have Chanel Anorex. What do we think of this color look? Her color was like golden. And that's because her home city, Salamanca, uh, the, all the old buildings are built with this type of stone, Villamayor stone, that looks very goldish, I mean. Okay. So this was her look. I personally love, love, love the corset. The skirt wasn't pressed, but it was correct. I think the fabric looks a little cheap. She's holding like a lamp. I would have made that 800 times bigger. Yeah. The mask, I personally don't like how it looks with the head. It looks a little bit plasticky. You know, she wants to give monster with everything. But it's not 100% terrible. I think it could have been presented a little bit better with a little more work on the mask, the lamp. I agree with you. I think the corset is actually extremely beautiful. I think that the actual dress, the gold dress, yeah, it needed to be pressed. I think that the fabric does look a little cheap and you can kind of see at the bottom, it's fraying a little. I would have loved a big lantern. I, I don't necessarily understand the skeleton half gold face thing. It doesn't really make sense to me. I think if she would have dropped that, it could have looked a lot better. Totally. Yeah, I think she she's really trying to go the monster route. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know if she knows herself well enough to go to a costumey route. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You really have to know who you are if you want to take it to the costumey thing, because we still have to see you under everything that you do. And I think that's something that she, she hasn't achieved yet, but I think she will. Yeah. The second look was harsh. Like, can we talk? Well, I looked this up and I do know that <laughs> Fresa de Ul... That's where I live. You have to say it correctly. That's where I live. Okay, okay. Say it so I can pronounce it. Huelva. Huelva. Yeah! Fresa so de this Huelva. means strawberries <laughs> from... Huelva. Yes. <laughs> But I didn't yeah. understand it. No one did. It's not you. It's not It's not you. It's her. I was like, is um, there a snake in a strawberry? Is it a worm? Is it I know. I know. It's not you, honey. It's, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. It's supposed to be a worm uh, to give it the monstery vibe. And okay. she takes off her wig and you can see like a brain with pieces of strawberry oh, coming yes. out. This is now officially the worst <laughs> outfit on <of> the <laughs> runway of Drag Race España season, <laughs> like any season in general. This is worse than Macarena's first look. This is worse than Bukit <laughs> Poison's looks. This is terrible. She knows it. Chanel knows it. You know, it, yeah. she is okay with it. But this is what was presented. The outfit doesn't look like a strawberry. The worm no. doesn't... The outfit isn't outfitting. The worm isn't worming. The worm is worming. The wig isn't wigging. <laughs> On that note, let's go to her next look. Yes, she had the Euskadi regional costume and she decided to take it to what she considers to be a Chanel route. So she was doing a futuristic secretary from Euskadi that have invited a different planet. Like it was crazy. It was like a lot of things in one. People have been saying very mean things about the outfit. I mean, it's ugly, but it is an outfit that is constructed properly, constructed basically. Properly. You know, I hate the skirt. I don't like many things about the design, but it was constructed properly. She tried. It is very mm -hmm. difficult for someone that has the drag that Chanel Anorex has to reinterpret a regional costume. True. Like, she's a cartoony monster queen you know and i actually think that she did she did a good job at the constructing at the sewing at the doing anything like that i think that maybe where she failed was in the design aspect 
Exactly. Yeah. The little skirt thingy Peplum was doing nothing for her. Yeah. The bib. It looks like she's wearing a bib. The Marna! hair was. <laughs> she, it does. It does. <laughs> But but she tried, you know, it's a lot of effort in this dress. Not everybody is great in the design area, but she's obviously great in the sewing area. And I think that that's also one thing that I've started to learn from Drag Race is that I never understood when girls, when people would say, oh, I brought this pattern. I didn't know what that meant until ah. I realized that they're actually bringing like, a pattern to then cut outfits. So then that way, when it's a design challenge, their outfits will be what they envision. Does that make sense? Yeah. You take an outfit that you already have probably. Yes. yes. And you trace it on a piece of paper, the different parts of it. So mm -hmm. that way, when you get there, you can transfer all the original pieces in the same size and the same exact way to a different fabric. So that's what they do usually. They bring patterns with themselves, yeah. See, th those are the things that I would forget about. If I was on Drag Race, I'd be like, la, 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 la. And everybody would be <laughs> like, I brought my patterns. And I'd be like, oh. Me too, me too girl. I will forget <laughs> all the parts. I hate, I love sewing and I love designing, but I hate making patterns. I just, like, I would, I would improvise something, you know? <laughs> it's okay. I would make something oversized. That works every time. <laughs> yeah, it, it really... You know what, Marga? That, I think that is the moral of the story. If you're ever on Drag Race and you needed to design something, more is probably better because the less you have on you, the more they're going to critique. Yeah, exactly. Next up, we have the Macarena. And let's go into her colors look. Okay, she is white because she's referencing her hometown. Um, the whole province is very well known because all of the little towns and villages all of the houses are painted white. They're called Los Pueblos Blancos, the white towns. And the city, the capital, Gadiz, uh, is called the Silver Cup. That's why she has a silver cup oh. on her hand. Yeah. And she has like tiny little specks of color because all these houses always have like a lot of mm -hmm. flowers outside. So she's referencing like her province. Okay. And then what is the hat? That's, <laughs> she did that there. It's supposed to be the blue skies of Cadiz because we're very well known for the weather. We have over 300 days of beautiful blue skies a wow. year. Beautiful weather. So yeah, but she had to make that uh, there. And I know that she wasn't super happy with the hat. The second look, did you know what it was when you saw it? I took it as like urchins. Yeah, there's sea urchins. So where she's from, uh, before the big carnival party, they have a specific holiday festivity where everyone goes to the street and they eat sea urchins. It's called La Rizada. Yeah, they're like free or something or almost free. Oh, like, wow. you know, it's like an event that happens every single year. So she's referencing that specific event. Okay. This was designed by Ugacio Crujiente, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he designed it and another person sewed it and she looks beautiful, I think. This was very successful in my opinion. I will say what I would have loved to see is like the urchins actually go out into like a dress. Yeah. What I would have done is make the stockings co cover the feet. That hurts me a little bit. And I think it is a little bit too loose. I think she has lost a lot of weight and it looked a tiny bit too loose. I know that the original costume had a little more volume and a little more spikes, but sometimes you cannot get exactly what the person what has you, designed, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this is what they, what they did. What I love is how she incorporated the orange because sea urchins on the inside have like orange flesh. And it looks so beautiful with the purple, you know? And it also breaks up the colors, too. Yeah. It makes the volume and the textures a lot more interesting. And she looked amazing with that makeup. Oh, and then speaking of the next makeup that was amazing that I was dying at <laughs> was her region look. Let's get into that, Marta. 
So she was given La Rioja dress of matrimoniar, this one I did not know that existed, like I had no clue. But since she had done the other two looks about Cadiz, about her comb play, she thought, okay, why don't I transform this into one of these old ladies um, that are from Cadiz? You know, you will see them all in black because it's tradition when you're mourning for maybe a couple of years, you will dress all black. They're all judgy, looking at everybody, judging everybody. But <laughs> secretly, they are, you know, maybe they're a little bit sexy or a little bit freaky. Yeah. Uh, so that is her version of the Cadiz old ladies. And I loved it. She sold it. That's the big improvement on sewing <laughs> from the last time. I was like, oh, my goodness. And then on top of that, the makeup to make her look old. I don't know what she did. I don't know what she did. Girl, me neither. She did this in 20 minutes. <laughs> she had on the sea urchin face, which is which looks nothing like this. And it took literally 20 minutes after the sea urchin to transform into the old lady. This is amazing. Like, you know, she has skills. I'm... The outfit is actually pretty well finished. If you look at, you know, mm -hmm. the sleeves and the everything is pretty well finished, actually. I Paquita just can't helped get over her. the makeup. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Literally, I mean, that's, that's shocking. Yes. Like, if I want to look like an old person for any project, I'm hiring the Macarena. Do my makeup. <laughs> Make me look old. <laughs> yeah. Don't hire Anna looking. No, 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 no. <laughs> She'll do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was a total success. I loved it. Total um, one up from last season too, which was great. And I love that it also was like a little reveal into like the little slutty grandma. Yeah. When, when girls try on purpose to be ugly, I like it when there is like some type of story or acting behind it. And it's mm -hmm. just not just the old lady with the saggy tits that we see over and over in Drag Race. Yeah. But there's actually like, I'm this old lady that we're all very familiar with, you know, judging everyone and wearing these type of clothes. That's the type of clothes that old grandmas would use in Spain, you know? Is that what you want to look like when you're an old grandma? I am an old grandma. No. <laughs> you're on the analoking plan then. <laughs> Next up, we have Clover Bish. What do you think about Clover? I didn't like this look. You didn't like the first look? Or the second look. <laughs> you didn't like any of them? The third look was okay. I think the three of them are correct, but none are amazing. You know? Yes. Yes. I think the concepts were there and they were cool. The first look, she was wearing the colors of the Cuban flag. Okay. And she was referencing the ladies in white, which are a group of ladies that demonstrate in Cuba because they're the wives of political prisoners. And they dress all in white and hold the same exact flower that Clover is holding. So the reference was there. Um, the design i don't know that the problem for me with clover is never the idea i just think that she probably struggled to get all of this done you know what i mean yeah. she has only she hadn't been doing drag even for a year she had only been doing drag for like nine months when they filmed you don't know that many people you don't know who to take your idea idea to True. to make it amazing you know when you've been in drag for a couple of years, you know, oh, this drag, Antonio is going to do this look exactly. The, and you take him the yeah. idea and he makes like an addition and then you go to another different idea and it ends up being something more. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all this we've seen before. I think the references are very cool, three of them, but especially the two that she brought they're done in a way that we have seen before. That's not wowing. Yeah. The idea behind it is super, super, very cool. But I think it's that, that she really struggled to bring all these things, you know? I agree. And I think that the looks are almost there, but they're not quite there. So like that little extra push could have done that. But I do love the reference. I had no idea about that reference till you just like, you know, told me I'm looking at these images and I'm like, now this makes a lot of sense. So 
props to her for bringing awareness to something that I had no idea about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the second look was a traditional dessert from Catalonia. It's called melimato. It's like a like a fresh unsweetened cheese with uh, honey and nuts. Okay. But it's done in a way that we've seen before. She looks gorgeous. It is true that in the first look, she's referencing Cuba. Her mom is from Cuba. And in the second look, she's referencing Catalonia. Her dad is from Catalonia. So she wanted to do like a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And in the third look, she got El Traje de Flamenca, the original costume of Andalucía. People would usually be more familiar with this one. And she transformed it into more of a Cuban salsa dancing look. Oh, yes. For being someone that doesn't know how to sew, she's a smart cookie. Very smart cookie. Next up, we have Petita. Were you gagging? You love her, right? You love her. I do. <laughs> I was gacking at the second look the most, but let's get into this first look, the colors look. She's all in red. She ended up showcasing like a windmill behind her. It was a windmill, right? Yes, it is a windmill. We There is a pub, like a cabaret bar in, in Barcelona called El Molino. And okay. it would be similar to what they have in Paris, the Moulin Rouge. So it's a red windmill, you know? So she comes out and she brings up this windmill and it looks amazing the dress maybe is not the most amazing thing but you know you're not looking at the dress specifically or the hair yeah but i love i love that it's not like the most glamorous dress she yeah. purposefully did it like a little bit i don't know floozy i don't know i like yeah. it this this picture that you have she's literally is like the red light behind the windmill and it had red lights too, but you couldn't see them from stage, but it lit up as well. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. that would have been so dope. <laughs> Next up was I was laughing so hard at this one. Girl, <laughs> me too. I loved it. <laughs> okay, is it a croqueta de, de calamar? Yes, croqueta de calamar. Have you ever eaten croquetas? No. Okay, croquetas would be what everyone says that their grandma makes the best ones like okay it's a competition between every grandma's croquetas it's the, something very traditional that every spanish person loves not me because gluten <laughs> but <laughs> these specific croquetas are made you know you can see the little how are you called the squid with the ink yes so they're black on the inside because you oh. use the squid. So that's why, yeah, when she comes out as the big croqueta, I thought it was so campy seeing just the fetish legs come out of the croqueta. It looked like the Toy Story character, you know, that has the cute Barbie legs, but it's <laughs> something completely different on top. It's like the rah, rah, rah. I was living. I was living. I loved it. It was very obvious that it was a reveal, but then it was this beautiful, very well-adorned squid uh with the black of the ink of the squid mm -hmm. underneath and this was just I, I her brain i mean literally for works. me i was like this is my type of camp of drag like those eyeballs on that squid i was laughing so <laughs> hard i was like this is this is the moment and then the black um kind of like coming out now it makes sense with the ink love this love this yeah, and it's all, all the texture is made with rhinestones, the, and the eyes are made with rhinestones, so she took it to a whole different place. My, one of my favorite looks of the night, definitely. And then we have the region. What region was she? She was Extremadura, and the item of clothing she was given was the hat, which is the most adorned piece of the whole garment. Okay, everyone is losing their shit with this one. I am not. Where are you? And are they losing their shit in a good way or a bad way? Everyone is loving this. Oh, I don't love it. You don't. I think it's a I, little too much. I think it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, like in some parts, I think that this is cute, it, but it is pretty close to the original one. Mm -hmm. If you take into consideration that they give her the hat that the headscarf was actually from Paquita. And for me, that skirt is not finished. I don't think that that asymmetry is on purpose. Mm -hmm. If it is on purpose, well, maybe I'm just wrong. 
but I don't see a finished garment with that skirt, you know? I agree with you. Maybe I'm just stupid and I'm just not getting it. She looks gorgeous. I mean, this is an amazing look, but I, I, people were too excited with this and I wasn't seeing it. Yeah, I, I think that that was my issue. When I said, like, it seemed like it was too much, that bottom part of the dress, I believe, was the too much. Like, it was the ties coming out at the bottom. I was confused because it looked a little like it was undone. And then half of the dress was one thing and half was the other. It was just a lot for me to take in. Yes. Yes, I understand. She did a great job. And I think this episode was for her. I mean, this was the episode where we are supposed to fall in love with her. So I will fall in love with her. I am falling in love with her. Just this specific look. I think that when you're a seamstress and a designer, you really need your time. You really need, yeah. you know, your studio, your machines, your patterns, your people. So it must be a little bit difficult, you know? Well, was Kelly Roller difficult for you? Extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. So hard. Okay, the first look. Did you get it? Like, with the jacket, changing colors? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, those, the red, the blue, and the purple are the colors of three political parties in Spain. Okay. So she is a lady that is voting. That's it. <laughs> okay. And we have a lot, like, more political parties in Spain. Uh, but she chose these three. And she starts with the blue jacket. And she turns it around. And it's, like, the red jacket. And then it's the back of, you know, her body that says, Ella no es una errata. Um, that was the purple color, which is the more advanced in gender issues political party that we have here in Spain. And it says, like, they is not a typo. We don't have a neutral pronoun. We had to okay. make one up. You guys can use they, but that already existed in English. It had another meaning, but yeah. you, you guys already have a... We had to create a word that didn't exist. So she's saying that word, ella, is not a typo. It's not a mistake. That's all the reference that she had. But this was, like, no, mama. Like, no. Like, mm -mm. she's not there to give fashion. No. No. She's there to give roller skates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she is there to be there, to make money, to, like, have her, the you know, she, she has to do this. If you ha have been working forever as a drag queen in Spain, mm -hmm. you have to keep up with all this if you want to stay being a relevant drag queen in Spain. So I think oh, yeah. that's why she's there. The second look, I was like personally offended. She does this thing literally with the milk and she throws over her open mouth like a gallon of milk almost. Like not that much, but it looked like that. I don't know the taste level, I mean, you know? Yes. It's like you can be sassy, you can talk about things, but literally doing that. Um, I love her. I respect her career a lot. The dress is ugly. The, the, yeah fabric is hideous but uh i do respect her career very much it's just a matter of taste for me i think that she doesn't do her drag for people like me specifically yeah she just posted a picture of herself pregnant saying that the milk worked uh, what? like yeah oh no no yeah yeah yep yeah. oh no no <laughs> I'm very confused with Kelly. I know that Drag Race is not the competition for her. I still respect her. And I know that she doesn't do drag for people like me specifically, but she has a huge career and I still respect her, you know? The third look, what do you think? This was like the... <laughs> That's how I felt. I couldn't even get the words out. I don't know what she was wearing. You have lactose intolerance. <laughs> So true. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this look was from Asturias originally. And the second look, the milkmaid look, was also from Asturias. The milk is from Asturias. That's the big producer of milk in Spain. So she had two Asturian outfits as well, like one after the other. And she tried to do something with it. But, you know, you know, 
I just, I would rather go to the next one, if I'm honest. Well, next up we have Visa. <laughs> and what is Visa's color look? Visa is being like pre-Hispanic Mexico. So she was told that she should, she could, and she should bring her culture. So she's being like the corn. If you look at her bra, uh, that is actually corn kernels painted in golden. Yeah. Stop it. I know. <laughs> I think this was quite successful. I think yeah. I like this very much for Visa. With Visa, it's also the taste level. Again, sometimes it is a little bit, you know, but I am against telling drag queens from Mexico when they're in Spain that they should look more like the Spanish queens. You know, mm -hmm. I want her to be unapologetically Mexican and not mm -hmm. compare her in the same terms with European queens. I mean, yeah. you know. So that's why I think. I think the first one is lovely. I have heard, I don't know if this is true, that many of the outfits that Visa has brought were like unfinished. Like she has brought a lot of fabric and she's making things. I don't know if it's true or not. I heard that. I could believe that. I could see that. It looks like that sometimes. Yeah. I think these, it was a, I think it was a pretty good week for Visa, but I always have the same problems with her. The first look, look for me was okay. Sometimes I don't understand a couple of things about the silhouette or where things come out of other things or where you put a decoration. But the green and golden look, I loved. The chili look, I would have a couple issues. You don't need to understand the reference. It's pretty clear. Yeah. The boots are terrible. I always have this problem with her shoes and her boots. I do not like. Never, ever. But well, yeah. what do I know? And the top... I would like it to be the same color of the chilies, maybe. Yeah. I also feel like the the skirt, the chili, the skirt of chilies could have been a lot better constructed as well to not just look like it's chilies hanging off of you. Yeah. The pieces that you have, like of the basket material on the hips. Uh, you could have shaped that in a more like round yep. way to make it a different silhouette completely. And I think it would have been a lot better, but you're working with what you're working. I think that yeah. even with those little things, it was a good work, uh, week for Visa. The look I liked the most was the one that she constructed in the workroom, to be honest. Do you like this one? I did like this one. I thought that it was a really well thought out look. There's multiple different layers to it. And it was for um, the Canary Islands. Yeah. And the fabric that she was given for the Canary Island regional custom is very similar to the, the Mexican fabrics as well. So she decided to go with a mixture of things. I loved the head thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were hating on it. I loved it. It's one of my favorite things of Visa. But I still hate the shoe. The shoes are always a little bit difficult for me. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Miss Latrice Royale would be very mad at all of her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was a good week for her. I mean, last week we didn't even see her see her in any of the confessionals yeah. or anything. You know, she's almost disappearing fading in the background. So I like that she was able to bring something cool and interesting to the runway and she was not critiqued so severely, you know? Yeah. And then last up, we have Bestia and this color look from what you put in here, I'm dying. It's from Bumper Cars? Yes. I love it. And yeah, that's her inspiration. She looks like the front of a bumper, a car, bumper car, basically. Oh my god. She oh took the god. neon colors. Yeah. The brawl piece is like the, the oh blinkers. My gosh. They call them intermitetas in Spanish. It's a funny pun in Spanish, like the blinker titties. <laughs> <laughs> so smart the hair is super cool i love her club kid style yeah it's really dope. i love it hmm. and then we have her flavors look i am very familiar with this candy are you i just always saw it when i was a child 
And I just always thought that the rapper just looked the coolest. Like, I don't know what it was. I just always <laughs> wanted Chupa Chups. Yeah, Chupa Chups. Spain is known for inventions that, um, like putting sticks into things. Like we invented the mop. We invented the lollipop. We Anything that is putting a stick into something to make it easier, the Spanish people have invented that. So that's funny. But these are like soft gummies. And this is very much part of our culture because for you guys, if you want to eat like gummies, candy, like soft gummies, you have to go to like the supermarket and buy a bag of them, right? Yeah. Well, for us in Spain, in every single corner store, everywhere you go, you can buy loose gummies by the unit. Each one would be five cents. Your father would give you 50 cents. So you would go there and you would say, give me three of those, two of those, one of those. And this is in every single corner store wow. in Spain. This is what we grow up eating. Like, I am old and I eat this all the time. Yay. Like, And you have a huge selection and we all know the names of all of them. And we've eat, been eating the same thing forever. So you can buy just one gummy in Spain, you know? I want to yeah. come, Marta. I'm going to come now. You can, Joseph, you cannot say that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming to Spain. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay, okay. Then, of course, you can come. <laughs> oh, it just sounds like the more you talk about it, I just get like more excited. I'm like, ooh, and this and this and this. <laughs> You're planning your vacation already. Okay, I love Writing it. Writing it down. Um, and then <laughs> what do we have for this region look? Okay, she she's the only one that got the regional costume of where she's from. So she's from Madrid and she got the regional costume of Madrid, which is called La Chulapa. Actually, Supreme was dressed up as the boy part of that for like the workroom talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the girl version. So... Um, she said during the episode that she was not that familiar with that side of like the traditions of Madrid of like dressing up in the regional costume, except for her aunt. And she explains that her aunt, that's the person that she would see in the regional costume and buying the flowers and making the dress and that she had died from breast cancer. And she explains the relationship with the last the last months or whatever with her aunt. And that's why if you look at the outfit, she has one of her breasts crossed out mm -hmm. and it's all in the pink color, which is the breast cancer awareness color. It does uh, have the same, uh, like you can identify the regional costume here. You can identify for several things, not only the hair, not only the skirt, but the two little like pieces of fabric that go from the waist to the skirt. Those are in the original Chulapa dress. And it's very club kid and it has a lot of layers of meaning and it's something very personal for her. And she did that hair there. You know, that's not something that she had brought. So this look was beautiful, very successful. And she didn't know how to sew. That is something that she just made there without knowing how to sew. Well, good on her. Yeah. <laughs> Are you liking Bestia? Because I think that she's been like on top or winning. Like she's been very strong every single week. But I don't know why I don't see more people obsessed with her. I believe that it has to do with them showing her personality and who she is. Like, I love every single look that she puts out, but I can't tell you who Bestia is. Yes, yes. I think that's the big difference with Onyx last mm -hmm. year, for example, mm -hmm. oh, that yeah. we could really mm -hmm. see her personality shine. Mm -hmm. And Bestia from Madrid, she has like a really Madrid personality where she's like a little bit, harsh sometimes or she speaks in this particular way which makes you forget about her a little bit sometimes mm -hmm. but she is doing a great job these three looks are amazing They're especially great. the gummies one for me and for not gummies knowing how to sew the third look was absolutely amazing yeah she she did it and she killed it 
And I really do hope that we get to see more of her, but also like more of the other girls' personalities too. After I said that, I was thinking about it and I was like, that's also something that I've noticed. Like we aren't getting full personalities of a lot of queens. No, we don't know Visa. No. We don't know her at all. You know, we don't know many things about Clover or about Ornella. We don't really know who Ornella is yet. No, you we know? don't at all. So I think it, it, I'm sure it's a matter of time, but I think that's one of the changes that we can see with the production. They're not doing that job as efficiently as they have in the other two years. And it's their responsibility. They cannot say that it was the girls. No, it's not the oh, girls sure. this time. You know, it's how you edit the episodes. They're almost an hour and a half long. You have way enough time to, to show everyone's personalities. And we're not seeing that. Well, on that note, let's take a break and we'll be right back. And we are back. We have our maxi challenge winner. It is Miss Paquita. Did you agree with that? No, of course not. You know, I'm biased. Paquita will be my answer every single week, Joseph, of <laughs> course. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was between Paquita and Bestia, to be honest. I agree. What did you I think? Agree. Yeah. I thought that it was going to be Bestia, honestly. Hmm. Interesting. But it was designer week the squid look was amazing you know yeah. it, it's her week i'm happy for her anyway she yeah. does deserve it and that squid look was it that was that was it i need it to yeah. be sent to me marta can you please write a message to her and tell her that i need that thank you okay i will no problem <laughs> <laughs> and she ended up winning 2,500 euros and then also um, necklace and earrings from a company, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom two were Chanel Anorex and Kelly Roller. And let me just tell you when this song came on, I was like, okay, we are doing the Spanish version of Genie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera. Um, yeah. And let me ask you, well, when were you in America? I was in America between like 86, 87 to 96, something like that. So you were in Spain at the height of Genie in a Bottle? Yes. And was yeah. it played in Spanish? Was it like in okay. Spanish first? I think Cristina Aguilera's probably like second album was Mi Reflejo and was a complete album in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And it had the Spanish version of a lot of her songs. So she had her debut album and then she had, I think it was probably 2000, Mi Reflejo, <laughs> like my reflection in Spanish. The whole album is in Spanish. And everyone who is like very old like me, we all knew this song in Spanish too. I was so excited and I was laughing so hard because me knowing the lyrics in English and then seeing what the interpreters were putting on the bottom of the screen for the <laughs> captions it was like i'm stuck in this bottle you let me out now and i'm like what is going on that's not how you already have a good translation for this song it was recorded. I know. everyone knows it why are these <laughs> subtitles like this yeah. but it's funny too right that's that's what my brain is thinking 99 percent of the time like between spanish and english and then back to spanish again and back to english again that's the brain parts of my brain all the time <laughs> Marta Literally. is stuck in a bottle. Let her out now. <laughs> Please. What did you think of this lip sync? I think it wasn't too amazing. But, you know, Drag Race España is not known for its lip syncs. Mm -hmm. uh, it was correct. Chanel had to leave very sadly and Kelly Roller. None of, like, none of them actually did a lot with this song. But Kelly Roller did a cartwheel. The skates, yeah. Well, Marta, that's the end of this episode. So thank you guys so much for listening to Exposed España with me, Joseph Shepard, and my fabulous co-host, Miss Marta Mama. We have new shows for you every Wednesday, and today it's Thursday, so apologies for that again. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to our show and remember to rate us and review us. It's going to help us a lot. So get into your podcast app and Posca, 
app yes. and just leave us a review. Um, okay, I want you guys to show us some love and I want to know what you guys think. And be sure to send us an email at draggedoutpod at gmail.com and we may read it on the show next week. Mm -hmm. And if you have any burning questions for us about Drag Race, just call us or leave us a message at 323-607-5116. We may play it on the next show next week, you know? And you can follow us at Lamarta Mama and Joseph A. Shepard on the socials. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week for a new episode of Drag Race España Season 3. Woo!